This is One on One. We are thrilled to be joined for the first time by Eliza Factor, the founder of an organization called Extreme Kids and Crew, and novelist and author of Strange Beauty, A Portrait of My Son. How are you? I'm, I'm very good. I'm happy to be here. Glad to have you. Tell us about your son, Felix. My son, Felix, right now is um, at a wonderful school in New Hampshire. He's been living there for five years. So um, he, since, since he's kind of moved to New Hampshire, um, I've been able to really dedicate myself to helping uh, families with kids with disabilities and building this organization. And seeing Felix, um, you know, in a more kind of conventional parental way, mm. rather than like a 24-hour uh, emergency high alert handler. What's he challenged by? Uh, he's got a bunch of different uh, disabilities. Uh, so, And because of that, my work is really pan disability. But um, I guess uh, cerebral palsy and autism would be the two big, like, big ones we use because there's a lot of understanding about them and mm -hmm. they're good for getting um, services. So the organization you created, what year again? Uh, 2010. Why? Because I have three kids. Felix was the first. Uh, Felix was, as everybody who has a bunch of kids, there's some wonderful, amazing, incredibly difficult uh, getting used to being a parent stuff that happens with your first child. <laughs> that, you know, it's not like the others are a breeze, but it's a major transition. Sure. Um, and then Felix was, uh, you know, a, a somewhat more complicated case because there was a lot of time in the hospitals and um, therapists and just trying to figure out why he wasn't sitting up, why he was like, like a right. rag doll floppy. Um, you know, what was going on. And, and so for the first three years of his life, I didn't really have a community of friends. I had a community of therapists and doctors and, you know, so like a wonderful babysitter because um, I couldn't, I needed help with Feel him. Feel isolated? So I felt very isolated. And then when I, I mean, I, I didn't realize I felt isolated because I have a wonderful husband and it was really, difficult, but also incredibly rewarding being with Felix. And he was very um, happy in many ways and very interesting to me um, and very expressive. So like even though he didn't use language and wasn't learning like other kids, just being with him and trying to get into his world was deeply rewarding. Right. And so I didn't understand that I was isolated until I had my daughters. And then all of a sudden, like, going to the playground or going to music class or something was so easy. And it was so easy to have conversations with other parents. Like everybody had been nice when it was just me and Felix, but I couldn't really relate to other parents because what they were talking about no. just seemed like so easy. And but just, the organization and does so, what for whom? Well, the organization, what it does is it, what it does is replicates um, that kind of easy socializing that happens with families who have regular kids. Like, we just, like, we have a play space. We have art projects. We have concerts. We just, we, we do all of these things that just bring people into a room together um, so that people can meet each other who have, you know, kids that are different from the regular kids that, like, hang out at playgrounds and, and stuff like that. So you can basically come to our spaces with your kid with disability, with your kid who, your neurotypical kid, and and just relax because you know everybody else in the space is okay. Like they're none of you're not freaking anybody out. If somebody has a seizure, people are like, is somebody helping that person? But mm -hmm. people aren't like, ah, I see. You know, like you know, it's just like when there's that um, that level of ease with difference, sure. the atmosphere is just like therapeutic, and it's a nice place, a way to meet each other and stuff like that. In your book, what is the message that you want to share with everyone? Because you talk about so much about what you've learned from Felix. I think um, oh, there are so many messages in there, but the, the, main the main message is I'm trying to break down people's fear and pity surrounding disability. Trying to, you know, make under, people understand that 
we all have disabilities. And, you know, kind of being frightened of somebody else's disability, I think, is often just oh, being frightened of our own weaknesses and fears and, and deep stuff. And so we get alarmed by the difference mm. of someone else. Um, and once that fear goes away, then life becomes much more interesting and uh, creative and fun and rich. And not that you can lose Good. your fear from reading a book, <laughs> but, 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 I, but, I, but I'm putting that, I, you know, it's, it's just one of those many little pebbles, hopefully, that you throw into the pond and then one of them goes thump and... That's the whole yeah. idea. Yeah. Enough pebbles, yeah. one after another, hopefully, I don't want to say changes people too, but opens up their mind. Yeah. Um, or if you can get somebody just in a different space for a second, you know, then they may see something that... The book, um, Strange Beauty, A Portrait of My Son, Eliza Factor, and the organization again? Extreme Kids and Crew. Your website uh, is... .org. Yeah. Dot .org. The website's been... Yeah. I want to thank you, not just for being with us here on public television, but the work you're doing every day. Yes. And um, you're making a difference. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stay with us. No, no I'll, I'll get it. I was so engrossed, I forgot. It's the end of the show. We'll see you next time. <laughs> okay. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Investors Bank. RWJ Barnabas Health, the Northward Center, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Johnson & Johnson, NJM Insurance Group, and by Berkeley College. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.